What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hartley and in this video I'm going to walk you through step by step how I use a stop loss and I'm also going to give you two different examples of trades that I am looking at today. Here is everything you need to know. Let's go. Okay, so first of all, when it comes down to setting a stop loss, there are multiple different ways and multiple different strategies to do this. And everybody can be successful using different strategies. But what I'm going to do here is walk you through how I think about and how I personally use a stop loss. So if you see somebody else with a different methodology or a different strategy, it's not that they're wrong or I'm wrong. It's that this is how we think about it and our trading strategies differ. That's all it is. So here we go. So when it comes to the stop loss, this needs to be determined by technical analysis and support and resistance. So what I mean by that is when I'm looking at a chart and trying to decide where to put my stop loss, I am doing it based on support and resistance and price action. So if I have support right here, I'm gonna put my stop loss just under that so that I know if the stock breaks through that support and it triggers my stop loss, well, my analysis was wrong and it gets me out of that. The other thing you need to think about is that your stop loss must be determined before the trade is made. The reason that I say that that is because your stop loss is part of your risk mitigation and risk management strategy. Now, your risk management strategy is something that we need to talk about here because this is what we're basically covering when we talk about our stop loss. So your risk management strategy, in my view, comes down to three aspects primarily. These are the most important aspects of your risk management strategy. Number one is position sizing. How much of your capital are you putting into each position that you take? Is it two positions with 50% each? Are you building a diversified portfolio with maybe 5% each or are you day trading with almost your entire portfolio each day? It depends on your trading style, but I can tell you the longer out you go and the more diversified portfolio you want, the smaller position sizes you want and the more holdings you want. But if you're day trading, maybe you need to use that capital to get the returns you're looking for. So this really comes down to your trading style. Now, secondly is diversity. If you're swing trading or if you're building a long-term portfolio, you need to make sure that you have diversity. So if you have 20 holdings, but they're all in electric vehicle stocks, then you've got a big problem there. You need to diversify and get four or five different other industries in there. That's what I mean by diversity because if all of electric vehicle stocks fall one day, your portfolio is gonna absolutely plummet and that is not what you want. You want steady and consistent returns when you're building a long-term portfolio. And lastly, this is where your stop loss comes in, but it comes in for your risk and reward ratio. So when you get in at $10 and you put your stop loss at $8 and you're take profit at $14, that is your risk return ratio. You're risking $2 to make $4. That is what I'm talking about when I say risk return ratio. Now for me and my personal trading, the risk return ratio that I usually like to look for is at least a two to one ratio, especially when I'm swing trading. That is kind of my golden rule, especially for the swing trading. So that's what we are gonna look at here. So what I wanna do is put this into actual use cases and walk you through how I look at a chart. So the first one here is Hillion Holdings. Now this is a stock that actually came up in my discord chat today I mapped this out for everybody in there and now I'm gonna walk you through how I think about this chart so when I see this I'm going okay there is very very clear support at this 1790 18 dollar mark there's very clear support tested once in November and now once at the beginning of December when we zoom into the chart you can see that the stock is coming all the way back down to the 792 range and maybe testing the 1780 1790 range in there and so if I was gonna make a trade on this stock today, this is how I would look at it. So my entry point right now is $18.30. If I was just gonna buy in at the market price, that's where I would be. If I was gonna set a stop loss on this, I would set it at $17.50. That is below support here, and there's enough room there for a little drop down. It's not gonna fill my order right away. If it sets a new low of 1790 or 1788, it's not gonna fill my order. But if it goes all the way down to 1750, Clearly that is a breakdown of support. Clearly I am wrong in my analysis here and that is when you want the stop loss to kick in. So when I look at this chart, I see, okay, we're trading pretty horizontal here around the 1790, $18 mark, 1830 right now. So what I'm gonna do is set my stop loss, this red line here at $17.50. I'm gonna put my take profit here just before the resistance. So obviously you can see we've got a spike in the price right here at the $21 level. It wasn't able to break $21 right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my take profit at $20.50. That's this green line here. So when we map that out, you can see I'm getting into the stock at $18.30. My stop loss is at $17.50. It is below support right here. I'm taking profit before the next level of resistance. So I'm taking profit at $20.50 instead of the resistance level at $21. So that way my order gets filled. Now when we do the math on this, you can see that the risk on this trade is $0.80. Cents. The reward on this trade 
is $2.20. And when you break that down as a ratio, the ratio is 2.75. So when you take this and you go back and you say, okay, I've got a trading opportunity here. Now let me see if that aligns with my trading strategy. Okay, it's a decent position size. I've got diversity. I actually want to be in this industry. And it has a risk return ratio of 2.75, which is higher than my two minimum for swing trading, which means this is a good trade. I'm going to execute this trade and I'm going to get into this trade. Now, if you guys want to learn more about analyzing the stock charts and learning a little bit more about how to actually invest your money into these companies, you should definitely consider signing up for my stock market course. It is completely free on Skillshare for a two week trial. And when you sign up, you get access to the entire course of eight plus hours of content, over 700 students, over 40 reviews for you to read all the content for. And you can sign up for two weeks completely free. And if you cancel before the two weeks is over, you get the entire course for free. I promise you it will be the best free resource that you ever sign up for. And the link is down in the description. If you want to sign up for it, I've put a lot of effort into it and I highly recommend it. If you are new and you want to get started in the stock market, but you don't want to pay $500 for somebody's course, this one is completely free. And I promise you will get 99% of the value out of it that you would if you were paying a large number for somebody else's course. Now, the next example we are going to look at is Comstock Resources, Inc. They're traded on the New York Stock Exchange. The ticker symbol is CRK. And this chart is super, super interesting to me because as you can see here, the price was at $13 at one point, came all the way back down to $4, went all the way back up to over $10, came back down to like $4, $4.50 right here, all the way back up and $4.44. It bounced off the $4 mark for the last basically two and a half years right now. And this is really, really amazing because if you could pick up on this and you could sell at a 20, 30, 40% profit every time this price bounced off four, you would have had like 10 different trading opportunities over the last two years with this stock. And so what I am really, really interested in is it looks like we're starting to come to the end of a descending triangle here. The price is also starting to come back down to this four, 450 level. And so when we zoom in here, I want to analyze this stock for a trade. So this is the end of that chart. I'm not looking at it on a four year period. I'm looking at it on a daily period in this chart, as you can see. So the end of the chart is back in June. June, July here. And then today is December 4th, 2020. And as you can see, the stock has basically been trading within this channel, but it's continuously bouncing off this $4 mark right here. And so as of right now, the stock has come all the way down. It's making a little bit of a bounce and it's sort of hovering around $4 and 75 cents. And so when I analyze this chart for a trade, there's a couple of different things that come to mind. One is we have very, very clear support at $4 here. We have structural technical support where the price has very clearly bounced off of $4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my stop loss just below the $4, 410 mark, and I'm going to set it at four. I'm going to set it at 390, maybe 380, somewhere in here, this red line. And then I'm going to set my take profit at the next level of resistance. So as you can see, the price wasn't able to break through this trend line here. There's clearly some resistance around this 6.2 mark, 6.4 mark. So I set my take profit at the $6 mark. So a little bit underneath the trend line, and we are going to analyze this stock. So right now, the price is at $4.76. So my entry, let's just call it $4.75 for easy math. I set my stop loss at 3.8. So this red line is even a little bit lower right here. So let's say my stop loss is at 3.8. I put my take profit at $6. So just below the 6.2 that was up here, I take my profit at $6 right here. And when you do the math on this, you can see that the risk is 95 cents. The reward is only $1.25 and the ratio is 1.3. So when I ask myself, does this fit in with my trading strategy? The answer is no, this does not fit in with my trading strategy and I should not take this trade. However, is there a level that this trade actually makes sense and does fit in with my trading strategy? And the answer is yes, there's definitely a level where it does make sense. And this is what it looks like. So if I change my entry from 475 down to 440, this little white line here, as you can see, it has moved. If I change my entry to $4.40, but I keep my stop loss at 3.8 and I keep my take profit at $6, so those haven't changed at all, the new math on this trade becomes a risk of 60 cents, a reward of $1.60 per share, and a ratio of 2 0.67. So now this trade makes a whole lot of sense. This definitely fits into my trading strategy and it's a trade that I would be more than willing to take. So if the price falls to 4.4, that is probably where I'm going to enter the trade. I could also place a limit order to get in if the stock falls to 4.4. But what I might want to do is just hold off and just watch the stock because if it comes back down to 4.2, 4.1, that might be an even better entry. And if it falls below that 3.8, 3.9 level, well, that's okay. I only lost 20 or 30 cents a share. 
but I still have the massive upside of five or six dollars there, which will give me between a dollar and two dollars per share in profit. So really, really nice risk return if we can get in at four dollars and forty cents. It does not fit within my strategy at four dollars and seventy five cents though. Now, if you guys are looking for a brokerage to start your day trading, maybe you're on Well Simple right now and it doesn't give you the functionality you need, I highly recommend Quest Trade. And if you use the link down below, it will give you $50 in free commission so you can get started with almost no sign up fee. It's absolutely phenomenal. I use it on a daily basis based here in Calgary, Alberta, in Canada, and I highly recommend it. Now, one topic that comes up a lot when we are talking about a stop loss is converting your stop loss into a trailing stop loss or just using a trailing stop loss in the first place. So I want to talk about that for a minute. Now, a trailing stop loss is something that moves up when the price moves up, but it does not move down. So let's say you get in at $10 and you set a $2 trailing stop loss, it will set a stop loss at $8. And as the price moves up to $12, your stop loss will then move up to $10. If it moves up to $13, your stop loss moves up to $11. However, if the stock comes back down to $11, your stop loss does not move and it will execute. Now you can set that trailing amount in either a dollar amount or a percentage amount. It's whatever works best for you. I personally use a trailing stop loss, but I do not start with a trailing stop loss. I wait until my trade has made about 25, maybe 50% of the profit, the target profit that I am expecting, and then I convert that trade into a trailing stop loss. The idea here is that you cut the losers early with a hard stop loss and you let the winners run with a trailing stop loss. So instead of having to exit my trade right at my take profit, if that stock decides to run, what I will do is I will tighten that stop loss instead of maybe 10% trailing, I will tighten it to 5% trailing and that way I tighten up my stop loss. If the stock starts to run, I have full upside potential and then it gets me out as soon as the stock starts to turn around. That is my personal strategy. That is how I like to use a trailing stop loss and that is how I like to trade. However, there are multiple different strategies and you need to figure out what works best for you. I do not start my trades with a trailing stop loss. The reason for that is if I get into Apple at $100 and I set a $10 trailing stop loss on there because I see clear support at $100. The stock may go to $120 and then drop back down to $109. It has not crossed that level of support, but because I started with a trailing stop loss, it will get me out of that trade and it won't allow me to capitalize on that trade that is still there and still existing and still testing my assumptions. And so I do not start with a trailing stop loss, but once I am comfortable with the profits, I convert my stop loss into a trailing stop loss by canceling out the original stop loss and placing a new one fairly quickly. Now, a couple of notes when it comes to a stop loss. When you trade and when you make a day trade, a swing trade or an investment, you are making an assumption as to whether that stock will go up or go down. The stop loss should be there and should be designed to get you out of that trade if your assumption is wrong. So if your assumption is that there is support at $100 on Apple stock, your stop loss should be placed so that when your assumption is proven wrong by the price action, it will get you out of that trade so that you can cut your losers fast and you can let the winners run. You can get back in at a lower price on the companies that you like, but you can get out of these losing trades quickly so that you're not a bag holder and you're not holding it in your portfolio. Now, if you're interested in learning more about how I trade and seeing my technical analysis and my watch list, you should definitely consider signing up for my Discord chat. That is where I'm trying to build a community of traders that share the same ideas and perspectives, but want to share their trading ideas and their resources with the community to build each other up. I also post my weekly watch list in there. I post all of my charts in there and a ton of resources that I personally use. So if you're interest in that, you can click the little join button next to the subscribe button, or you can click the link in the description to sign up through my website. I would love to have you there. It is $5 per month. And I'm trying to build a community of traders that want to share resources and share trading ideas. Now, in summary, when you are learning about a stop loss and experimenting with a stop loss, you should be doing it in a practice account. You should not do it with your real money when you can blow somebody else's fake money. That is the way that you experiment. That is the way that you play with different strategies. And that is the way that you test the user interface that you are actually going to be trading on. You need to open a practice account. I use mine every single day, even as an experienced trader, and I highly recommend it. Secondly, you need to adopt the principle of cut the losers early and let the winners run. If the stock is falling, you need to sell out and buy back in at a lower level when you see support and when you feel comfortable with it. Do not let that stock drag down your entire portfolio for months and months when you could be investing that money somewhere else and making a return to buy even more of that favorite company that you like at a lower price. That is the way that you should be thinking about it. Also, you need to have a trading strategy. I compare all of my stop losses to my trading strategy to make sure that every trade I make fits within
in my strategy and you need to be doing the same thing. You also need to be journaling your trades so that you can see where you can improve and you can analyze your trading to become a better trader. And if you get any value out of this video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. I sincerely appreciate it and thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Good luck trading.